Raise your hand if you love classic Scotch Roos. Okay, now raise your other hand if you thought that Scotch Roos was something that you had to leave behind if you were following a plant-based or vegan diet. Well, I'm here to tell you, if that's you, then you're going to be so thrilled with today's recipe because we're going to be making vegan scotch a -brews. I know you're going to love these. Uh, it's perfect for this time of year because they're no-bake and they're easy to make. We're going to eat with just a few ingredients in just a few minutes. So, um, But what I wanted to share with you is I'm going to show you my secret trip. Tip, tip for making these scotch roos have that kind of little scotchy butterscotchy flavor to it and also i've got another special tip which is how you can share and you know decorate them for a party so without further ado let's talk about how you make these so first of all we're going to start with the cereal part which um, includes six cups of cereal i'm using special k these are actually also called special k bars but um, the thing I like about Special K cereal, as you can see, it's not like just any cornflake. They're kind of puffed a little bit, but cornflakes will work and Rice Krispie treats will, or Rice Krispies will work as well. I don't know why I always add the word treat after Rice Krispies, I mean. <laughs> um, then we've got a cup of peanut butter and we've got a half a cup of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm sorry, I actually think that's a third cup. We just double check. Yeah, that's a Oh, that is a half a cup of brown sugar. That's right. And then what I have here is um, one cup of syrup. Now I'm using Caro Dark Syrup because it's a nice inexpensive option. You can use whatever you want, but this is a lot. It's a whole cup. And so, uh, you know, one option is you can use agave nectar. That works really well. It's not as expensive as something like maple syrup. But if you want to do maple syrup, you should go for it. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to combine... Um, the brown sugar and the Kiro syrup. So I'm going to stir that together. I like adding the brown sugar because it gives it a nice, you know, it, I talk about butterscotch. It adds the kind of that butterscotch flavor, which uh, we're after in spades in this recipe. So I'm going to stir that together because I don't want to see any big clumps of brown sugar in there. And then we're going to throw this in the microwave. You can also do this on the saucepan. Just make sure you watch it very closely because we want to cook this until it's hot, but not boiling. And that is really important because if you boil this mixture, this is going to turn into what my mom always used to say, hard tack. It's, this will be such a hard for a bar. You won't be able to hardly chew it. So we don't want to boil this. We just want to get it really hot. So I'm going to put it in the microwave one minute and then that's going to cook. Um, while that cooks, we can talk about, like I said, you can use maple syrup, you can use a coffee nectar. Um, we're going to add a couple of ingredients once that's nice and cooked or warm, and that is a cup of peanut butter and a half a teaspoon of salt. And you may be wondering, like, why would I add salt to a dessert? Well, these bars are really sweet, and I think if you only have just the sweetness coming through, it just it's just too one-dimensional and adding just a little bit of salt really enhances the sweet flavor and also just adds a complexity of flavor that I really love. So I, that's why I really think adding a little bit of salt is going to be a good idea. So let's check out what's going on in the microwave here. It's only been less than a minute here, but you can already see it starting to bubble up and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. What we're trying to do is melt this brown sugar. So giving it a little vigorous stir, as you know, sugar can dissolve even without any heat at all um but he heating it up in the microwave helps it go a little bit faster so i'm going to put it in the microwave for just a little bit longer another three seconds or so yeah it's got so in all in all that's going to be about a minute um i think that's going to make it a perfect easy recipe to make actually the thing that takes the longest about these um scotch or brews is the amount of time that it takes for that chocolate topping to set so it's such a simple recipe as you can see we've got one two three four five ingredients for the bars itself and then we'll talk about the topping in just a minute okay let's see that's perfect i think sometimes what i'll do is i'll i'll give it a good stir and i'll just drizzle it like that and you can kind of see you're kind of looking for there not to be a whole lot of brown sugar speckles and just a nice little stir here we'll get that going now what you don't want to do is touch this because sugar gets hot really fast so you sometimes i would say you know you can inspect an ingredient and see if you can feel the granules you definitely don't want to do that with this recipe <laughs> so here we are we're going to add this hot liquid 
to the peanut butter. And I like to use the spatula to get as much of this out of here as I can. Because I want all that in there. Put this over here. And then we're going to give that a stir. I'm going to add the half a teaspoon of salt. And what, what I love about this is the heat from the syrup will, me will melt the peanut butter as well and make it very pourable. So just give it a nice stir. We're just trying to incorporate all that syrup right in there into that peanut butter. Create a nice peanut butter sauce. I don't. I wish you could smell this because it smells so good. Doesn't that smell good, honey? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It smells so good, and it just infuses the kitchen with the smell of peanut butter and brown sugar. I love it. Okay, so here we have our six cups of special case cereal, and I'm gonna pour the sauce right into there. Again, I'm gonna use this spatula and go around the bowl and get just as much of that sauce as I can because we want it all. Okay. So then now we're just gonna stir this quite gently. I mean, we don't wanna, we don't wanna crumble up all of those flakes, but I wanna make sure they're all coated with the sauce, so. A nice, gentle stirring will get that accomplished. Can you hear that crunchy in there, that crumbly? That turns into a crunchy bite of peanut. Uh, that's what I love about the cereal concept is it's got sweet, it's got peanut butter, and there's crunch from the cereal, so I love it. It hits all my favorite notes. And don't forget chocolate. Yeah, well, the chocolate's coming in a minute. You're right. Don't, you cannot forget the chocolate. So I have this pan ready, and I'm going to show you this tip that I did because I'd like to have the, I'm using parchment paper, and I'd like to have it kind of extending a little bit on the sides so that when the, when the treats are done, I can just pull it right out. So, but it's kind of a pain to work with. So what I did is I actually just got the parchment paper wet, and then crumbled it up and then put it in the pan and that makes it kind of stay like that. So otherwise it feels like it's kind of difficult to work with parchment paper in a pan like this. So that's just a fun little tip. So let's put this, these bars in here, or this peanut butter mixture. I'm using, this is basically a nine by 12 pan. This one's just a little bit smaller than that. and. So based on the size of the pan, these will be shorter or taller, depending on what you want. So if you want these to be super tall with the peanut butter bars, then I recommend using a smaller a pan that's just a little bit smaller like this one. But if you want them to be, you know, maybe a thinner bar, then you can just use the traditional nine by 12 pan. And so you can see what I'm doing with this spatula. I'm just sort of pressing this down into the pan. I'm going to turn right here. That helps you not have a bunch of air pockets. And you'll have some, but if you press it down a little bit, it'll, it'll work. Okay. What do you think? Does that look good? Yep. Okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to put this over here. And we are going to move on to the chocolate sauce. Oh my gosh, do you see that? Do you see how beautiful that is? Oh, I wish you could smell that. It smells so good. It's so pretty. I think I could just eat that like that. But we, we are going to like it even more with the chocolate sauce, I promise. <laughs> so we're going to start with two cups of dairy-free chocolate chips. We really love the Kirkland um, dairy-free. They Kirkland has two. Uh, they have a dairy-free, and that's what we, we get. So to that, we're going to add... Four tablespoons of caro syrup. So like I said, we use a lot of caro syrup in this recipe. Um, you can use agave nectar, that's just fine, or even maple syrup, whatever. Whatever kind of syrup works best for you. I think it's all good. And then we're gonna add 
one third cup of butter. That's where I got that one third cup. It's from the but. It, the, this is some Earth Balance vegan butter. And I don't know if you know this trick about how to measure out one third cup, but basically what I do is, I you know the the butter has these markations on it, and so I just count one, two, three, four, five, and I go a little bit further because five and a third, and then I put a little indentation in the butter itself. So then, when I open it, I know exactly where where to make the cut on the butter itself. So you can see here that there's this end of mark and this markation so that's what I do and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it into pieces we're gonna melt it anyway but this might help it melt a little bit faster there you go and then my favorite ingredient to turn this uh, to make this have more of a butterscotch flavor it believe it or not is a tablespoon of vanilla that's probably more than you would put in a typical recipe like this but I feel like the vanilla gives it that butterscotchy flavor so in the microwave this goes we're going to stir it i'm going to microwave it for like 30 seconds and i wanted to talk with you about um the carrot syrup and the butter why we're adding those things because you could just put chocolate chips you could melt chocolate chips and just drizzle that over the top however that topping is going to be very firm it's, it's just like chocolate chips it's going to melt very firm so adding a little bit of like of the butter and adding a little bit of uh, the, sh the syrup creates a fudgy kind of top. It's almost like a ganache that's on the top of, of these bars. It's so delicious and so good. I think you're gonna love it. Okay, we're gonna give this a stir. Oh yeah, that butter is already starting to soften. Now we're gonna make sure all the chocolate chips are coated. You can see they're gonna take a little bit more time in the microwave, but once they once they get heated up, they'll melt really fast thanks to that syrup. Help, you know, syrup really gets hot fast and it will melt the chocolate chips. So let me just put this in the microwave for yet another minute. I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for recipes, especially as, as the weather starts to get a little bit warmer. I do not want to be like turning that oven on and getting that kitchen all hot and things like that. So that's why I think, you know, doing the doing recipes having these no bake desserts are so important okay so i'm going to talk with you uh, we talked about the syrup the cereal swap ideas we talked about syrup and i want to talk with you about peanut butter because i love using peanut butter in this but if you have an allergy to peanut butter or you just want to switch it up you can for sure use almond butter or um, sun butters that are actually even nut free so there's all kinds of options that you can use that's why i make sure to be aware of that Make sure that this recipe works for you and your family. Okay, now look at that level of meltiness. That looks really good. So what I'm gonna start doing is just stirring to incorporate the syrup and the butter. What do you say? Do you say syrup or syrup? Syrup. Syrup, okay. I'm glad I'm saying that right. I'm, you know, I grew up in a small town, so sometimes I don't say things the right way. You don't even wanna get started on that. I can make a mess of words sometimes, but I'm glad I got that one right. Okay, look at that, that looks so good. Don't you think that looks perfect? Oh my God. Now, I wish you could smell this. <laughs> oh, that chocolate just feels so good. Oh, love it. Okay, so we're gonna pour this beautiful chocolate sauce over these bars. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Oh God, that little delicious. And this is why I love using spatulas because then I can just scrape out all of that goodness in here and I can use that spatula to just spread, I'm just gonna spread that chocolate sauce over the top like that. I want it to be even. I don't wanna have like a big glump of chocolate on one side. This glump of word, I just said glump of chocolate. It's my word, so I'm using it. Um, but if I had another spoon, I would do that, but I don't. So I'm just going to use my finger just to get all that chocolate on there. I'm going to wipe it off on the towel. <laughs> and it's okay if you go right up to the edges of this because um, it's easy to pull it out once these set. So that's pretty much it. That is really a wonderful dessert. <laughs> 
this goes in the fridge and then uh, it, it'll take probably 30 minutes to set completely for the chocolate to set and then you're ready to cut these bars but i did want to show you a little trick about how you can decorate this for a party so if you've got a cheap skin coming up you could use your red and yellow sprinkle sprinkles or if you've got a birthday party um you could just imagine using just these colorful sprinkles so i'm going to show you how to do that just while the chocolate is still soft go ahead and just add these really pretty sprinkles and it just transforms these bars into something really fun and festive. Another option, if you wanted to make them look, you know, more grown up and sophisticated is add a little bit of, have you ever seen that flaky salt? You can add some flaky salt over the top. That would be gorgeous. And like I say, very sophisticated. So anyway, I just wanted to share that tip with you. Like just go crazy with the toppings because it really transforms it from just these simple little bars into something really fun. So. I'm going to set these aside. These are going to go in the fridge. You can let them sit. You can let it sit outside. Probably would take several hours or set, set at room temperature in the kitchen. But I like to put them in the fridge and that makes it makes them get ready to eat even sooner. So here we go. I want I think some questions that you might have about snicker, um, scotch roos is can you make them ahead of time? Absolutely. So if you've got a party tomorrow, Go ahead and make these today and they'll be ready. I love things like that because, you know, when you've got a party going on, you're really busy and this is just an easy thing to make. You can actually even freeze them. So I love that too. So these are just the perfect treats for any party that you've got going on. Okay, so let me just go. It's time for the taste test. I cut off the smaller one so I can take a nice little bite. Look at that. And that looks delicious. Okay, here we go. Taste test timer. Mmm, this is awesome. Look at that. Yes. It's so good. You get the little bit of crunch from the salt and the, I mean, from the cereal and then the complexity of flavor from the peanut butter and the salt and the syrup and the chocolate. This is dark chocolate too, uh, except that We've added that syrup and it's got the vanilla in there. And so it's just got that kind of scotchy kind of, well, I don't know. So very delicious flavors all combined together. I think it's going to be hard to just eat one bite. I think we're going to end this and I might just finish this off. What do you think? And I think you're probably jealous because you want, you want to bite and you have to hold the camera. So you can't. <laughs> Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for enjoy uh, joining me today. I have had a really good time. I hope you have too. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to get more recipes coming your way every week.